Hey everybody. <laughs> That's a plaz. It's like the little plastic. That's a plaz. We're in the woods. January 7th, 2024. How's that? It's going to be a little, oh, it's a little bit better. Yeah, it was in, it's because I had the camera in my little, little yellow bag over here. Oh, help me. Okay. I made it. Oh, it's still snowing. I'm out in the woods. Yeah, January 7th, day after uh, the Epiphany. It's about 9, 9.30 in the morning. I already made my turkey chili. I'm gonna go home and have that <laughs> after this. I'm gonna pan around a little bit, show you. There's the, there's the pond. I don't think it's quite frozen yet. The little stream. Yeah, beautiful out here this morning. You know, some people are still sleeping in my house and uh, they'd miss all this. Of course, you know, I sleep at odd hours just so that I can experience all the hours of the day throughout the week. You know, because that's where the wonder is. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just look at your neighborhood and at different times, you know? because there are miracles out here. You know, it's not even that cold. It's so pretty out. Just after the snow, I can make footprints across my neighbor's yard. Actually, I decided to cut through between the two neighbor's houses. I decided to be nice today so that they wouldn't be looking out the window at my footprints. Just to be nice, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of nice neighbor think about those things but uh, you know instead of crossing right in front of my office not saying anything or anybody but anyway hi it's it's the epiphany yeah you know that's uh, I woke up today this morning I don't know what day it was it was this morning, I woke up with the, and the pressing question in my head was, what was the gift for the 12th day of Christmas in the song, the 12 days of Christmas? You would think that I'd have some kind of, you know, coming out of my dream state, I'd have something profound. But all I could think of was, what are the gifts? Like, from five down to, down to the, from the gold rings down to the partridge, I'm good. But from the drummer's drumming down to the, what's the sixth one? Six, I always forget. Is it geese, geese laying is the sixth one. So I said, oh, I can talk about that today because it's still kind of Christmas. It's, you know, most of us are getting ready to take our trees down. Ours is still up. But I said, yeah, and it suddenly hit me out of the blue, duh. There's 12 days of Christmas, there's 12 months in a year, and there's 12 zodiac signs, right? Duh. You know, and numeral numerologically, 1 through 12, I mean, look at the numbers. It kind of corresponds to, to what each one means, you know? If you think about it, like the partridge in a pear tree, it's one bird, you know, and it's, it's it's Capricorn, right? That's the one the one bird sitting in the tree. The partridge is kind of like um kind of like a fancy bird, you know, kind of like royalty, sort of like snooty bird. Um, you know like in the partridge family you see the partridges? They're kind of like peacocks, aren't they? Something like that? I don't know. Do people eat them? I think about those little Cornish game hens, like snooty birds that people go out and like they parade around. That's kind of like Capricorn, you know? They're kind of bossy, kind of like, get out of my tree, you know? And then, and then turtle doves, you know, the doves. There's always two of them. You never see just one dove, right? That's February. That's kind of like the month of love, you know? Turtle doves, two, the number two. It's about 
partnerships and couples. And then three is, uh, three, um, what the heck was three? Okay, three French hens. Yeah, so I guess that's kind of like, you know, uh, in March, you know, we have St. Patrick's Day with the shamrock, with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's the Trinity. You know, that's Pisces. Pisces is about God, right? And all that is. So then we get four, uh, four, three, five, no, three, four calling birds, four calling birds. You know, that's kind of like calling birds. They make a big racket, like in the spring when everything's starting to grow and Aries and like, blah. Four calling birds, calling birds. It's kind of like they talk to each other. You know, they're, 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 they're like teenagers, you know, on social media. That's Aries. They kind of just, you know, pst, everything is all crazy. Um, yeah, and then uh, the five golden rings. That's, that's kind of like Taurus. You ever see the bowl with the ring in it? No, no. Um, and then six. This is like um, at the front, the, the geese laying, or the hens laying. Six, you see the number six? It's like motherhood, right? It's kind of like a pregnant woman with the six. So that's kind of easy, and like half a dozen eggs, or you know, that's sort of like Gemini. They got a lot of eggs in the all over the place, right? They don't put all their eggs in one basket. They got them all, all different projects, all things. And then uh, seven, uh, seven. What's seven? It's, uh, the swans are swimming. So that's like see, like a seven. Look at that. That's like Cancer, you know, July. Um, swimming, right? We go swimming. But look at the number seven. It's like a swan, isn't it? And then, uh, what is it? Eight, eight words? What do you think? No, swim, drummers dancing. But I don't know. That's where I get a little bit lost. Uh, you know, I think, I think the drummers drumming is Sagittarius. That's the twelfth month. You know, they're, it's, um, Sag is kind of like, um, the little drummer boy, right? Announcing Jesus is coming and, you know, getting up on the soapbox and talking about it, making a lot of noise. That's Sagittarius. And then Scorpio, it's uh, the 11th. 11. That's good. The 11th month, right? 11. Um, 11 lords a leaping. Is that lords? No, that's seven. No, nine lords a leaping. Ten. Oh, no. Nine ladies dancing. Yeah, that's Virgo, right? The ladies, the young maidens dancing, right? And then the Lord's leaping is Libra. Libra, Lord's leaping. It's kind of like the cardinal sign, you know, goes into the fall and it wants to dance and, you know, all the artsy stuff. That's Libra. And then the uh, Lord's leaping, um, you know, after the Lord's leaping, and then where does it go? Lord's leaping. And uh, I forget, I forget what Scorpio was. Uh, after that, well, anyway, um, I'm not Lord's leaping, yeah. swans are swimming, Lord's leap, ladies dancing, but a uh, maids and milking, maids and milking, that's, that's Scorpio, so that's, Scorpio, is that maids and milking, or no, that was, no, that was Leo, Leo's maids and milking, it's eight, uh, because of creativity, you know, and all that, it's, that falls under Leo, uh, and then, uh, let's see, yeah, Scorpio is, is number 10, no, number 11, yeah, number 11, or whatever that was. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that the whole time. But, you know, I think, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, you know, some people online, I, I looked it up, and, you know, they're, they're going down the whole, like, church route on that, like, oh, the, you know, the, the eight Beatitudes and seven of this and, and then six of that. Yeah, but I don't think that that's really the highest interpretation of the song. I, I think you can twist just about any song or any, any prayer, anything to suit your own purposes, right? I'm just throwing things out here, you know, like a, like, like a snowball, you know? When you create you fit things together, right? And, uh, you know, it's like the snow. It's kind of nice. Oh, it's the best kind of snowballs. Get out and make a, make a snow person. I'm going to try to hit that tree over there. 
And let's see if I can do it. Oh, oh, I hit the other tree. I hit the bush. Whatever. But, um, yeah. So, you know, try again. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So, yeah, it's the epiphany. The Isaiah, the, the Jesus, um, the kings, you know, it was prophesied that the, they didn't say Jesus by name, but they said um, in Isaiah, yeah, they will uh, follow his star. They will find the baby. They will bring him gold and frankincense. Um, yeah, so, you know, it was prophesied. And then the Ephesians, the, uh, Lord, oh, the Lord has pity on the lowly, the poor and the afflicted in the readings today. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and Ephesians. It's a epistle of Paul to the Ephesians, letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Ephesia, I don't know where that is. That Ephes the Ephesians, anyway. He wrote to all these people. Like, um, you know, they didn't have social media back then. So he actually, you know, he went and he met with these people and then he wrote them letters later. You know? Like, in the, in the, back in the day, we Gen Xers, we had to write letters to each other. Right? And now it's fun. It was kind of nice. Um, you know, I, it, and it, it occurred to me today, that's what's annoying. But, because today, you know, it used to be, if your friend went to another country, like my friends, we went to Spain at the same time, but when I was in Spain, I looked forward to writing, choosing postcards and sending them for, to individual friends, right? The problem with social media if you get a postcard from your friend who was in Spain or Italy or France, it was exciting because they thought of you. You know, they put that stamp on there and they mailed it. They took the time to write a special note just to you. And you didn't think they were bragging, right? It's not like, oh my God, I got to look at 16 days worth of, you know, everything they had for breakfast and everything they, every, you know, place they walked. No. It's like, oh my God, my friend, such a great friend who wrote to me about what she was doing in Spain. It was from the giving and the receiving end. It was special. When you got social media, you got a thousand people, and you're posting about your grand European trip, by the fifth, fifth or sixth day, people are going to be like, man, <laughs> you know, they're going to hate not hate you, but, you know, even if they're pretty grounded people, eventually, you know, even if they've been there, they're going to start going, okay, that's nice. You know, you, you, you start comparing yourself to people, no matter how firmly established your identity. And, you know, most of us have a little little gaps here and there. We're not perfect. We like to be out traveling, all well, some of us, instead of stuck here in this beautiful place. Um, anyway, that's all I have to say about that. But even though we love our friends and we're blissfully happy that they're having a great time, we wish we were there. I mean, we're happy for you, but, you know, we all would, wouldn't we all want to live the life as we perceive it to be? We don't know about all the crap that happened, you know, in the, there could be a fire behind you. We could have, you know, waited in the airport for 16 hours, but you're not telling that, us that. You're showing us the beautiful piazza, which is great, but... What about all the crap that happened? All the stories, all the people you met. That's what I want to know. I, that's why I'm getting rid of my Facebook profile. I'm whittling it down. And that's why I don't go on there, because it drives me crazy. Because you gotta, you know, it's your profile, right? It's your, it's all the stuff that people aren't aware of that they're shoving out there that everybody else who isn't them can see no. Okay, we're, we see it. So, well, eventually you see it. Sometimes you don't see it at first, but then after you start seeing it, 
And you want, so I'm spending all my time, I think, on my Zazu page because that yields the best dividends. And it kind of weeds it out for me. The fake stuff from the real stuff, you know? So anyway, um, yo, Matthew's Gospel. We have seen the star at its rising. Oh, oh, Ephesians, right. Uh, th- so the Gentiles, he talks about the Gentiles being equal heirs, you know, to, to God's Word, to, you know, what Jesus was, was coming to talk about. Right? And, and then the thing about Matthew's Gospel, they talk about, you know, the three kings and how they, uh, we all know that story of the, the kings, um, Dia de, um, de los Tres Reyes, Three Kings Day, which is, you know, Christmas in some, um, you know, Latino, Hispanic, Mexican, I think, maybe Puerto Rico, um, different, you know, Spanish-speaking countries, I think, especially celebrate that. And it's beautiful, you know? That's when it was my mother's birthday, January 6th. And, it, you know, now that she's passed, and it's, it, you know, the spiritual meaning of the day, January 6th, it's still, it's still meaningful to me. And that's how I choose to think of that day, you know? But if you want to put a, a hashtag, you can't, because you know why. Because now, that beautiful day, that was the day my, my meme died, the day my mother was born, the epiphany, that beautiful day. You know, some people associate with a day that wasn't so great. And we all here in the United States know what that is. I don't need to go into it. But, you know, I choose not to pay attention to that. Things happen, but I don't have to, I don't have to let it take me over, right? I can still associate because I'm conscious of this, right? I'm conscious that some people uh, choose to think that way, and I don't. So it's in my reaction to it that makes the difference, see? I'm just going to put that out there. But, you know, it works for anything. Um, You know, what's sacred to you? What, you know, where are your boundaries, right? Capricorn's all about that. It's, you know, Saturn. Where do you draw the line? You know, in your little box. Kind of, you know that goat climbing up the mountain. Mm, I gotta get there. That's it. Cut the crap. Anyway. Um, So the song for today. The eighth song. Purple Rain, the the soundtrack movie, Prince. Baby, I'm a star. You and your stars. You and your stars. Eh, we have free will. Anyway, you know who you are. Still looking at the stars. I'm still looking at the stars and listening to the stars. Prince. I guess it was recorded, uh, Baby, I'm a Star. Uh, Let's see. Oh, the video, I guess. I don't know. I'm posting the video, and it says June 25th, 84. But that's not right. Um, It was recorded originally in 82 in Minneapolis in one of his, you know, studios. It was before, it was kind of like, you know, the, the peak of his, you know, like when he started getting really big, 83. Um, it was uh, uh, I Would Die For You after that song this came out uh, yeah so I thought it was perfect because Prince okay royalty you know like the kings coming to see Jesus you know, like Prince and purple and royalty and all that perfect the baby I'm a star the North Star right might not know it now right Part of the lyrics to the song, you might not know it now, but I'm going to go to the top. It's like Jesus, right? Herod wanted to know, the king at the time. He was really jealous, you know, because people were talking about this, this new baby, you know, this, this new star was coming. And he felt a little bit threatened, right? Because he wasn't on that, <laughs> he wasn't on that trip with the, with the kings. 
right? So he wanted a postcard. He said, tell me what's going on. No, they didn't have social media back then. They didn't have email or whatever. You know? so, and the letter would have taken too long. And these guys were, these kings, they were astrologers. You know, they don't say that in church, but they were. They were astrologers. You know, some of them from the Far East and, and from, you know, different lands, far off lands, right? But these were, these, they read the stars. How, did, how do you think they know to follow Jesus, right? They, they channeled it. Well, there were people like that out there now, today, right? that people in power don't want to know about. They don't want to know about people who are, uh, who have come to, uh, you know, uh, help the lowly and the poor. I don't have much money, but I'm rich in personality. I'm born in a manger, right? Got princes uh, rich in personality, but so is Jesus, see? Because um, if you know anything about human design, it up. So basically, you know, you see this like chart. You get this chart you put in your birthday and it and it and you have basically you have two parts of you. And you have a part that's your design, which is the unconscious stuff that you, you, you don't know about, but other people see in you, right? And that's like the lower part, the unconscious under the surface. Then you have your personality, which is the things, the gifts you're aware of that you can use, right? What you think you are, right? So you're aware of that. You're, you know, you're consciously using it, right? See? And the other stuff is stuff that, you know, like, I don't know. I haven't even found an apartment yet. I've got to move out of my house next week. Something will happen. I'm not aware of it yet. <laughs> It's unconscious, but somebody somewhere is taking care of me, and it's gonna come through. I know it will, because I have faith. Um, and you know, I got a plan B, so I'm Gen X. Don't worry about it. I got a cardboard box over there. I'm gonna anyway. Maybe I can live off the grid in my little hobbit hole. I've been getting a lot of ideas off Instagram. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so, you know, Prince had a vision, right, of his own success. Well, it's, it's the same kind of thing, right? So, the talent, Prince came in with a body, came in with all, you know, everything. And, but his, his gifts, you know, are channeled through him. So that we were blessed to have Prince as the vehicle to, to sing and dance and entertain us. You know, that's the spirit working through him, right? So each one of us, you know, we might not be Prince, but we have our own unique song and dance to give to the world, right? And the more open we are to that, the more we clear on all the other crap that we don't need, then God can come through us and make us each a star, you know, in our own way. It's not like we all have to wear high heels and, you know, dance around like Prince on stage, but in our own lives, on the, on the, in the play of our own lives, we are a star, right? It's our show. You can't be otherwise. You can't have it not be your show because you're the one who's in it, who's observing, right? So I think that's kind of cool. Um, so we have to kind of channel this and let this come through us out to the world, right? We, in other words, instead of looking to somebody else, and saying, that person is, you know, the Savior, right? We all have to now save ourselves, right? We all have to be that light for ourselves in the world and for others, right? Um, so that's why, you know, it's, you, you kind of, 
you know, I look at that, I say, okay, so why, why do I feel, you know, why, why does it make me feel uh, antsy when I look at other people's vacation pictures? Well, maybe because, you know, I like to travel. And I'm not doing enough of that adventure stuff that I love to do. If I were, then I'd be, I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me, you know. Not that it bothers me, but, you know, sometimes I just, I don't have any interest at all. I'm like, oh, that's nice, you know, because either I don't want to go to that place or I just, you know, eh, don't care. But the extent to which it bothers you is the extent to which you want to do that thing, you know? To the extent that Herod was looking at the baby Jesus and feeling threatened, you know, this kid's going to take over my throne. This kid's a threat, right? How, how many times have you been in the workplace or somewhere? Usually it happens in the workplace. Now we're in Capricorn. That's a good example. And there's somebody, you know, I, many times I've been working for somebody or with someone, usually a woman. And they'd be like, you know, trying to throw me under the bus and sending me flowers on, you know, Secretary's Day, even though I was like an assistant trader, you know, just trying to get it, get it, get it, turn the right can. You know, you know the type. You know, you've got, you've got that boss who won't let you... Uh, you know, gets in your way when you're trying to look, you know, change departments because they, they feel threatened. They're going to lose you because you're doing all the crap work. And if they lose you to somewhere that you'd rather be, where you, you have more of a line to, to advance, they're going to be without you. And who else is going to show them how to turn on their damn computer and do their Word documents crap? You know, who's going to come to the rescue when the system, when you, the, the, the lady next to you, you know, Nori crashes the system again? You know, how much can we take? So, you know, you've got, you got people getting in your way, right? They, for whatever reason, they have their own insecurities, right? And they want to stop you from shining. You know, there's some guy trying to take your ideas, you know, like, oh, you know, she's making too much money. Let's get rid of her and hire some kid out of college and pay him half as much. Makes sense, right? No. Anyway, but I'm just saying, okay, so we've all had a Herod in our lives, you know, and the, 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 the way that the, uh, the kings listen to their dreams, right? How often do we do that? How often do we wake up and we have images, we have ideas, we have something that, oh, just I just wanted to do that one thing and I woke up. What was that thing? What was that number I saw and the dollar bill somebody gave me in my dreams, you know? Those are the things. Write them down. Because those, that's how God communicated with, the, you know, through angels. Right? The kings and their dreams. And these are the kind of things that people say are woo-woo today, right? Astrology, dreams. But the very people who are putting you down for listening to that stuff are threatened by it. Because maybe they don't get messages like that. Or if they do, they don't know what they mean. So, you know, if you have gifts, if you have abilities, right? You're always going to meet people who are trying to take you down. Get in your way, shift you off somewhere where you can't cause trouble, you know, get in their way, being queen or king. That's what I say. They're hard. Not, don't listen to those people, those voices. Because that's your, that's your unconscious programming. That's their unconscious programming coming out at you. Because somebody once did that to them, right? A mother, a father, a, a nun told them, eh, be quiet, you know, I don't want to, you know, you and your ideas, I don't want to hear you. Somebody did that to them. 
And that's why they're doing it to you. And once you realize that, you can forgive them. You go, okay, I get it. I'm sorry. It's okay. Let's bury the hatchet. So anyway, new year. Supernova. I'm going to go maybe... I've got a turkey chili waiting back at home with some uh, cornbread. So, but I, I had to get out here and do this first. Because I just, I was just kind of feeling like I needed to walk. You know, so now that I have, I'm going to go get warm. Oh, I could have hot chocolate. Like the paleo kind. Paleo hot chocolate. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Maybe tomorrow. Okay, so I will leave you now and uh, go out and have a stellar week. Baby, you're a star. Don't forget it. And, uh, yeah, go and, and uh, enjoy this week. I think there's a new moon coming soon on the 11th, I think. It's going to be good. So uh, write out your intentions. It's coming. And uh, hopefully I'll have some good news for you uh, on the home front next week. We'll sort this whole thing out. Take the tree down. Till next week, Zazuplaz signing out. Take care. Stay warm and get outside. Enjoy the snow. See you next week.